Hello, and thank you for joining us. You're live with Senator Tom Livis. Tonight we're talking about the mental hygiene closures. If you'd like to ask the Senator a question, please hit star three. Again, if you'd like to ask the Senator a question, please hit star three. Senator Livis, how are you doing tonight? Manny, I'm doing great, and thank you and everybody who's participating in my live telephone town hall. It's been a while since I've done one, and I look forward to answering the questions from all of our participants. This is uh, Senator Tom Levis, and I want to thank you for joining me in this live telephone town hall meeting. We're going to talk about a lot of things, but one of the things we're going to talk about is the uh, mental hygiene closures, the closures uh, that are proposed for the Binghamton Psychiatric Center and the Broome Developmental Center. As you know, or may not know, and one of the reasons why we're doing this this evening, um, I put a plan together that uh, I think uh, can freeze the closing of these facilities, and uh, that's something that uh, we want to do so that we can work things out. But uh, I also want to answer your questions on anything else. Please press star 3 to ask me a question. Uh, this is Senator Tom Levis, and thank you for uh, joining us on our telephone town hall this evening. Um, we'll be happy to go to... Uh, uh, some questions very soon, but uh, I want to do a survey too this evening for all of you. And uh, this sounds pretty simple, but I know there are people that feel differently. So, uh, do you think we should keep the Greater Binghamton Health Center and the Broom Developmental Center open? If you believe we should, uh, press one. If you believe we should not, press two. Uh, again, if you think we should keep the Greater uh, Binghamton Health Center, which is the uh, Binghamton Psych Center and the Broom Developmental Center open, uh, press one for yes and press two for no. Uh, this is Tom Libis. You've joined my uh, live telephone town hall. Um, we're going to talk about uh, my plan to keep the Binghamton uh, Psychiatric Center and the Broom Developmental Center open. Uh, I've introduced legislation to freeze the closure, uh, and that uh, legislation uh, we will pass in the Senate in January, and it would freeze the closures uh, until April 1st of 2015, which would give us plenty of time uh, to uh, uh, do what we need to do to uh, try to come up with an alternative plan. Manny, do we have any callers coming in? Yes, we have a lot of callers. We'll try to get to as many as possible. Uh, again, if you'd like to ask the Senator a question, please hit star 3. Right now, we're going to David Spiegel in Norwich. David, you're on with Senator Tom Libus. Hey, hey David. How are you doing tonight? Good, good. If I, facility... I, hear some, I, I hear some activity in the background there. Grandchildren. Yeah, it's wonderful. Go ahead, sir. My, my question is, um, if the facilities do close, and I hope they do not, what are the plans to provide care for the residents that are currently in the facilities, and how will they be assisted in their further treatment? Uh, David, great question. I mean, that's what we're asking um, the state to provide us, which they have not. That's been a question that I've asked, and I've asked it time and time again, that if you're going to close these facilities, um, what kind of treatment is going to be provided? We know, number one, that our, our local hospitals can't take anymore. We know that county governments are, are full. We know that there's not enough services in the community. So that's part of my overall proposal in trying to convince the governor and his staff that um, you know we need to we need to keep these facilities open. We need to keep the children's unit open. We need to make sure that the dangerous pedophiles that are at the Broom Developmental Center are not let out into the community. So these are the kinds of things that we're going to be working on and um, that I'm going to be fighting very hard for. Uh, if you'd like to give me a call, press star 3 to ask a question. Um, <clears throat> my name is Senator Tom Libis. Uh, you've joined my live telephone town hall. Uh, we had a survey earlier. We're asking the question, should we keep the Binghamton Psychiatric Center open uh, and the Broom Developmental Center open? If you believe so, press 1 for yes or press 2 for no. Manny, let's go to another caller. Sure. Our next caller comes from Binghamton. We have... Joyce on the line. Joyce, you're on with Senator Tom Lewis. Yes, Joyce. Uh, yes, Senator. First of all, I want to thank you for uh, putting out the bill on the freeze. Uh, thank you. I, th I think this, uh, these closings have not been uh, well planned. Uh, as far as we know, I am not understanding where there is any dollar amounts uh, allotted to the community uh, they want the places closed, but however, I don't see any plan uh, as to where these uh, people at both centers are yeah. going to be going into the community yeah. and where is the money saved, how much, and sure. where is the money to reimburse the community. Sure. These, are, these, these are all great questions. These are questions that I've 
you know, ask the governor's people, because uh, as, as you know, uh, I created and, and helped draft the community reinvestment bill a number of years ago. And that meant that when there was closure, the money is supposed to follow the client into the community. The state doesn't do that anymore. Uh, and they should because it's the law. We passed the law. I helped write that law, and the state ignores it. So um, those are all good questions. We're going to continue to ask those questions and more. And, and, again, my goal is to go in and to try to keep both facilities open. I'm going to do everything that I can, uh, understanding that, um, you know, it will be a, a tough, tough debate. Uh, this is uh, Tom Libis. I want to thank you for joining my live telephone town hall this evening. And, and you know, before I go to the next caller, I just want to say, you know, thank you to many of you. Um, uh, as I've continued to fight my battle with uh, prostate cancer, uh, many of you have been so kind in, in sending me emails and, and writing notes. And, um, you know, about two months ago, I had uh, uh, back surgery, and um, they uh, they helped uh, deal with a problem I had from radiation four years ago. But I'm on the mend. I'm feeling better, and I'm and I'm up for this fight because we have to keep these facilities open. But I, I just want to say thank you to to all of you out there who have been so kind to me and my family and and, and the prayers and uh, they they all count and we take them very seriously. Manny, can we go to another caller? Sure. Our next caller is from Binghamton. We have Fred. Fred, you're on the line with Senator Tom Livis. Uh, Tom, hey, it's great news to hear that you're doing better because it's been Thank a real you. concern, and, and we've been praying for you and our family. Well, we appreciate we need that. You. We really do. We Thank really you. need you there, and, and it's Thank a you. great service you do, and I know you've had some really rough times. I hope you keep Thank continuing you, to get better and keep going. Thank One you. of the things I'm really concerned about is broom developmental. Mm -hmm. These people in, a, in the LIT unit, a lot of them are criminals. They're mentally incapacitated criminals. Uh, they're not aware of what they do. They're arsonists. They're child abusers. They're rapists. They're, and a lot of them have no comprehension of right and wrong and what's going on. But yet, right now, and they already have been being released into our communities, there being some of them put in apartments. A few months ago, one was let out and within a week raped a woman in Binghamton. Another one heard, just Fred. a few weeks ago. Yeah, and another one just a few yep. weeks ago just went into Pennsylvania and did a burglary. He wasn't even out for a week. Amazing. And I have people that work there. I know people very well that work there. They're actually they're, they're changing their records. They're taking them because they're trying to fast track everybody out into the community. They're changing their records. They're taking them off their psychotic drugs so that they look better for these private homes because the private homes don't want the serious problems. So they're but actually I'm, I'm... changing their records. I want you to know that I'm very much aware of it. This is something that I stressed in my letter to the governor. Uh, I was very uh, upfront to him and told him that we had some real serious problems and that we needed to deal with that. Um, I agree with you, and, and they're serious people. They're arsons, they're pedophiles, they're people that we don't want in the community, and that's what we're fighting to stop, and, and that's why I'm so adamant about this. So. Um, we're going to keep fighting it. Manny, what do we got here? Uh, if you want to ask me a question, star three to ask me a question. Um, we have a second survey question that I'm going to go to in a little bit, but first let's, uh, let's take a couple more callers. All right. Our next caller comes from Green. We have Claire on the line. Claire, you're on the line with Senator Tom Libeth. Hi, Senator hey, Claire. Tom. How are you? I'm doing okay. Okay. Um, I was an aide, and I worked for the county, and I do very much appreciate you trying to keep them closed because they need to be in there for treatment. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm all for it, but my question to you is about the Obamacare. Do you, you really you know, uh, feel... Here, let, me, let, you me, re let, me, let, me, let me answer that for you. You know, Obamacare is a, is a federal issue. Uh, it's not an issue that... Uh, um, that I'm getting involved in. I don't agree with it. I think there's a lot of problems with it, as we all know. Uh, and I would suggest, and I'm not trying to brush you off, Claire, but um, you should call Congressman Hanna's office. It's a Washington problem, and, um, and it's not something that we deal with at the state level. But in the meantime, um, for those of you who uh, are, are working with me to try to keep these uh, facilities open, press star three to ask a question. And if you'd like, um, we'll go to the second survey question, and this one is a little different. You know, in 2014, January, we will be starting the new legislative session. Uh, I would ask, what do you think the most important issue is? Um, should we 
hold the line on taxes, if you believe that, press 1? Or should we be helping small businesses create jobs, if you believe that, press 2? Um, should we be investing more in U Binghamton University and Broome Community College, press 3? And, and should the DEC make a decision one way or the other on hydrofracking, press 4? Uh, those are, are issues that will be coming before us. Uh, maybe you feel strongly about all of them, and if you do, uh, you, can, you can press all four numbers. Um, Manny, do we have any new calls coming in? We, we seem to have uh, quite a few on the board. Yes. Uh, our next caller is from Johnson City. We have Mike from Johnson City. Mike, you're on with Senator Tom Levis. Hello, Mike. Mike? I don't hear him. Looks like we lost Mike, but we're rolling right through. How about Mary from Endicott? Mary, Hi, you're on with Senator Tom Levis. Hi, Mary. Hello, and uh, I want to thank you for your efforts to try and keep the facilities open. Thank you, Mary. For Developmental Center and the other centers regarding people that are there for a reason. Mm -hmm. um, to me, I worry about the fact that there are so many of these people being lost in the cracks, and then they turn up shooting people, innocent well, bystanders. They, 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 they do. could very well happen here, too. We've sure, already yeah. had the civ Civic Center situation. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I am concerned that freezing it isn't going to be enough, freezing the, them from closing them. Um, how do you feel that's going to work? Well, what, I, what I'm doing, Mary, is putting in legislation that would force them to, to move, move no one or take no action until April 1st, 2015, so that we could work out a plan. See, right now they're, they're proposing closing these facilities quickly. They've already transferred people from the Broome Development Center to uh, Albany. Uh, I want that to stop. I want to freeze that. Um, if we freeze that or put a moratorium on it, it gives us an opportunity to sit down with the administration and negotiate and try to keep these facilities open. Plus, I'm fighting because the southern tier will have no representation. All of the facilities will be across the thruway, none in the southern tier. This is Tom Levis, and we're having a live telephone town hall meeting. Uh, we're talking right now about keeping the Broome Developmental Center open uh, and the um, Binghamton Psych Center. Certainly, uh, this coming legislative session uh, is going to be a, a busy one in Albany, and uh, we asked the survey question, do you think we should hold the line on taxes? If you think we should, press 1. If you think we should be helping small businesses create jobs, press 2. And if uh, uh, should we be investing in Broome Community College and, and, and Binghamton University, that's more than we have, press 3. And should the DEC make a decision one way or the other on hydrofracking, press 4. Uh, those are our survey questions. The original survey question on the Greater Binghamton Health Center and Developmental Center came back, I think, Manny, what, 99 to 1 in, in favor of keeping them open. So um, I, I believe we're on the right track there. We want to preserve the 1,000 jobs in the community. <laughs> we want to do uh, what's right and making sure that uh, our residents are safe from uh, folks who shouldn't be in the community. And then those who... Um, um, who need the uh, the expert care. Manny, what do we got coming in? Sure, we've got a call from Binghamton. This is Lucille in Binghamton. Lucille, you're on with Senator Tom Okay, Lopez. thank you. Hi, Senator. How are you tonight? I'm good, Lucille. How are you? Good. I want to thank you for trying so hard to do what you're doing for Binghamton. You've thank so you far much. done a very good job. Well, you're so sweet. now I, I, I'm retired, but look at all these people that will lose jobs. It's very bad. This community is very bad for jobs, for people. And you know it as well as I do. And they that's should Lucille, keep I'm something fighting. open in Binghamton. They well, must. That's, that's, why, that's why, Lucille, I'm fighting to keep uh, both facilities open. You know, the, um, uh, I believe the developmental center alone has about a $29 million annual payroll, uh, money that goes into the community. Um, that's from 650 employees or so. That's extremely important to us. As I've said time and time again, every job is important. It doesn't matter where the job is, what it is, but, but it's, it's extremely important. And I just think we should do whatever we can uh, uh, to help people, uh, you know, maintain those jobs. And plus we need the facilities open. We need the care. Uh, and that's extremely important, and that's what we're fighting for. Uh, this is Tom Levis. You've joined my live telephone town hall. 
If you'd like to ask us a question, press star three. Um, even if we don't get to you tonight, and we'll try to get to as many as we can, uh, you can leave your question on a recording at the end, and we'll definitely, and I promise you as we have in the past, we will always get back to you with an answer to your question. Manny, can we take another caller? Sure. Our next caller is from Bainbridge. We have Nancy on the line. Nancy, you're on with Senator Livis. Nancy. Oh, good evening. Hi there. How are you? Um, How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you, and thank you for all the efforts that you uh, mm -hmm. put forth for those of us in our rural areas as well uh, as the cities. Um, with the closure of, of the um, Broom Developmental Center, you know New York State's under heavy pressure to comply with the Olmstead and Community Choice Acts. Um, mm -hmm. Something is going to, to change in this state to to allow those that can be in the community to hopefully have the community-based supports that they which, need. Which we, Nancy, which I've supported throughout the years. Yes. Given that you want to freeze things to two, and, and that, by the way, would maintain jobs just in different settings, you know, um, yes. and with different support structures. Um, given that you want to freeze things to 2015, what is the interim plan, um, if, if you have begun to think about one, to to build up those community-based supports and services so that the state can can step in and, and do the right thing to, and be compliant with the Olmstead Act and, and the cuts from uh, uh, let me, let me Nancy, let me answer that, and I know, I know it's, it's a little complicated for some of our listeners because they don't know what the Olmstead Act is, and the Olmstead Act is a, a, a federal law that basically says that at some point in time states need to begin to um, – open up community care facilities for people with disabilities, which we we have been doing over the course of the last 10 years. You know, I authored the Community Reinvestment Bill. I authored Kendra's Law. Uh, and, and I'm very much in favor of putting people into the community who can survive in the community. Right now, we don't have the community residences. We don't have uh, the places in the community to take um, what they want to uh, move from the uh, Binghamton Psych Center at this point in time. Absolutely. And from the, and from the developmental center, um, we have some, as, as mentioned earlier, some very serious characters up there that we don't want in the community. So um, there, there is a fine balance, and, and yes, what we're looking at is the state's supposed to give us a plan. The state's supposed to give us a plan. They have not given us a plan. And so by putting a freeze on, this gives me and my colleagues a, a, enough time to ask a lot of questions and demand some of the answers that you requested. Uh, I appreciate your thoughts. Manny, do we have uh, – let's take another caller. This is Senator Tom Livis. You've joined my, Sen or my telephone town hall. Excuse me. And uh, if you want to ask me a question, press star 3. Manny, who are we taking next? Sure. Our next caller comes from Lyle. We have Ellen from Lyle. You're online with Senator Libis. Ellen, how are you? Hi, Senator. It's an honor to talk to you. Well, thank um, you very I'm, much. I'm so happy that you're trying to save the um, mental health facilities around here. We need it so bad. But um, I want to know what else can we do um, as taxpayers? Who Should we start a campaign for the governor, or what should we do? Well, well, that's a great question. You know, a lot of you have gone on my webpage, uh, tomlibis.com, Tom, Tom and, and you've signed the petition. I've got a petition. I've got over 6,700 people who have signed the petition. I think that's fabulous, and, and you can do that. And, and certainly, <coughs> excuse me, don't be afraid to call the governor's office. Um, you can go online and get a message to him. Believe me, they look at these things. He has local representatives. Um, Call them and let them know that this is serious to us and we don't want to see these closures. So I, I told the governor when he was here um, a week or so ago that uh, this is a, a flawed plan. It's a, it's a plan that couldn't come at a worse time because of the number of jobs that could be lost. And if he hears it from residents and um, he hears it from uh, uh, me and, and my colleagues, um, he'll, he'll take it much more serious, and uh, feel free to pick up the phone and call him. Manny, let's go to some more callers. We have quite a few callers coming in. Sure. Our next caller comes from Binghamton. We've got Gene from Binghamton. Gene, you're on the line with Senator Gene, Lewis. you're on the line. Hi, Gene. Thank you, Senator. Thank you, Senator, for taking the call, and I appreciate all your efforts. My chin is this. Uh, with the school killings uh, sure. a year and a half ago, uh, priority was set federal and state 
to implement changes with mental health and increase funding and gather in more programs uh, to prevent uh, the killings. Mm -hmm. And I find the violence, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, but I find that that money is not there. Uh, I happen to run an in-home mental health program. Okay. And uh, there's not subsidy for it. Uh, that so, I Jean, let, let me let me let me say this to you, um, uh, and because I want to answer your question, but yet I want to. We have quite a few callers coming in. And I want to try to get as many as we can. Um, the federal government promised money after that, and the states have not seen it. Um, and a lot of that is passed through money that comes from the feds to the states. Uh, for some reason, that money has never made it to us. Um, that's something you may want to reach out to our congressional reps to ask about. I'll do the same. Um, my staff is here. We're making notes tonight, and uh, I will also reach out to the congressman's office and the Shen Senator Schumer and Gillibrand and find out why that money hasn't come. Um, thank you for your call. Manny, let's go to the next caller. If you want to ask me a question, press star 3 to ask me a question. This is... Senator Tom Levis, and you're joining my live telephone town hall. Manny, who's our next caller? Sure. Our next caller is from Binghamton. We have Bruce on the line. Bruce, you're on with Senator Tom Levis. Hello. Hey, Bruce. My name is uh, Bruce Rowe. I've been in the mental health system now for about 20 years, and I was having a complete breakdown about 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and I've got an extended amount of uh, help from mental health. Uh, I was in uh, Memorial, and then I went to Krems. Right. Then I went to an alcohol rehab, and uh, then I went to ACBC, and I'm getting help with therapy now, and Good I'm deal. also getting help with Project Uplift. And it really astounds me because Project Uplift is a very good organization that's doing a lot. They used to help mental health patients that didn't have cars uh, with getting groceries, but then their funding got cut. They keep cutting back the funding for Project Uplift, and as far as I know, they do more to help people with the drop-in center uh, combined with Project Uplift, uh, with the Beacon and the Sunrise Club, uh, than a lot of other organizations. Uh, Bruce, let me, let, me just, you, you, let, me, let me just say this. Uh, congratulations to you, and I don't mean to cut you off, but I do have a lot of calls that we want to get to. And, and the fact that, that you would share your positive experiences with um, uh, the, the mental health programs that have helped you, I think, is tremendous. Um, I, I want to thank you for calling, and that's why we're trying to preserve a uh, lot of oh. these programs, because they will help people like yourself. Um, th thank you. That took a lot of courage for him to call. Uh, Manny, uh, let's keep going here. I want to get as many calls in as we can. And um... Sure. Our next caller is from Deposit. You have John from Deposit. John, you're on the line with Senator Tom Levis. Good evening, Hello. Senator. Hello. Hey, John. John, you know, I, you know me. Is this, um, is this the mayor? Yes, it is. Okay, yes, I wasn't sure. I wasn't sure. I recognize the voice. That's exactly who it is. We, we need these facilities. Local and county governments cannot afford these services, and it's a state responsibility. And I, I think re really right now it's underdone. Um, mental health relates here in this area to crime and drug abuse, and, and it's really underdone. So what you're fighting for is really – Part of what we need, we need more of this stuff. And and you know, our last our last murder was with a hammer, and mm -hmm. and there, our governor I seems to be, be taken yeah. with with gun control, and that's not where it's at. It's where you you are right now. That's where the problem is at. And it needs money, it needs facilities, and there's people out there that need help. You know, we've had attempted suicides in deposit. I think we had four in a month some months ago, and these people were out walking around the next day. They're not mm -hmm. getting the help they need, so we need more of what you're fighting for, not where it's at right now. We need more of it, and, and well, I appreciate yeah. what you're doing. Well, thank you, sir. And, and, and you sound great. You point. sound great, by thank the way. Thank you. Thank you. I'm, uh, I'm back at it. I'm, I'm feeling good, and uh, it's because of a lot of good people out there who said a lot of prayers, and, um, you know, we, we're still... Um, uh, we're still going strong, and, and, and I want to thank you for that. But but that's why we're fighting for these facilities, and that's why we want to keep them open. Uh, Manny, let's keep going. We have uh, we have a lot of callers coming. I'm really impressed with the number of calls that are coming in. Sure. Our next caller is from Green in Chenango County. We have Dorothy. Dorothy, you're on the line with Senator Libus. Hi, Senator Libus. This is How Dorothy. Are you? I'm Hi, Dorothy. good, thank you. Thanks thank you. to God, I am good, and I've heard you oh. talking 
Um, I just admire your courage and um, oh, you're sweet. picking up another fight because I was cancer. I was diagnosed with a very aggressive cancer three years sure. ago, and they said it would be uh, mm-hmm. back in two years, and it'll be three years in December. So, well, God bless you. God I know bless you. what um, mentally and everything sure. that. Sure. <laughs> so thank you so much. Well, these and, other fights take my mind off it, so it's a uh, it's it's a good <laughs> thing. But I know. Go, what, what was what was your question? Thank you for my your time. My question words. is: I have an autistic grandson in a group home, mm-hmm. and they get a lot of services from Broom Developmental for the patients in the sure for the clients in the group home. Um, what will happen with the group home? I assume that that's going to affect that too if Broom Developmental gets closed. Well, that, that's that, that's a good question. I mean, we we um, we're not getting the answers that we want from uh, from state government, and that that's kind of what I'm pushing for. That's why I'm asking for the freeze. Um, we we want those services to continue, and if if there are going to be closures and if there are going to be transfers to the community, and uh, a lady um, um, talked uh, earlier about that, um, you know, I, I'm all for it. But but let's talk about how do we continue the care and that, that's really what's missing here is how do we continue the care and it's it's it's, it's very frustrating that's why we're, we're fighting to do everything we can uh, Manny let's go to another uh, caller and uh, Dorothy thank you for that call um, let's uh, see if we can take a few more but let me uh, survey question number two uh, we asked you uh, what um, is important holding the line on taxes 30 percent said yes uh, helping small business 19 percent said yes um, investing in Binghamton University and Broome Community College, 8% said yes. And interestingly enough, 43% of you said it's time for the state to make a decision one way or the other on fracking. Now, I'm going to give you one last survey question before we go to the next series of, of uh, callers. This is going to be a more of a fun one. What do you think the most helpful state agency in New York is? Now, I'm sure for some of you, you're wondering, what do you mean a helpful state agency? Is it one, the Department of Health. Press two if you think it's the Department of Transportation. Press three if you think it's the Department of Motor Vehicles. Press four for the Department of Taxation and Finance. And if it's none of those, just press five. Um, a little bit of fun here uh, as we kind of wind down in our calling. But, Manny, let's take some more callers. Um, we, can, we can probably stay on the line for five or ten more minutes here. Let's, let's see what we can do. Sure. Our next caller is from Binghamton. We had Samuel. Samuel, you're on the line with Senator Libis. Hi. Uh, Senator, Hi you there. are no doubt aware of the murder that occurred in Virginia yesterday when a state senator running for governor, his I son was released from a mental institution because they didn't have enough funds to keep him in. They and couldn't he came keep home. him there. That's correct. They, they didn't have the funds to keep him there. He by no means should have been released. He was released. He came out. He stabbed his father and then killed himself. Yes. And um, are you using this incident to illuminate what could happen here? You know, I, I, I haven't, but it certainly it can be part of the discussions because this is all part of what we're trying to do here. When I sit down with the governor's people, I can use this and probably a hundred other um, circumstances that have taken place because this is exactly uh, one of the things we're talking about. Now, when you don't have enough facilities, you don't have enough uh, beds. If you close these facilities, even our local hospital said that they cannot take any inpatient activity. Um, United Health Services told me that they pay now an additional six million dollars a year, and that they can't afford anymore. The Lord's emergency room can't take anymore. So that ties into exactly what you're saying, and and the fact that this this case in Virginia. Uh, if if you don't have facilities and you close them and you don't have inpatient facilities where you can take people in um, or emergency facilities that can take them in for mental health, which we're not going to have, then you've got a real problem. You know, in 2006, I opened up the children's unit. Uh, it was closed in 1990. Over 180 adolescents have come through that unit on an annual basis. We've got 15, 16 beds up there. Uh, parents are thrilled with the work that they do. The staff does an outstanding job, and we need to keep that open. We need to have that here in the southern tier. Manny, let's go to another caller. Sure. Our next caller is from Conklin. We have Nancy from Conklin. Nancy, you're on the line with Senator Libis. Hi, Senator Libis. Hi, Nancy. Um, my question is this. Um, 
personally, I'm, I'm familiar with a family that had a young teenager in crisis. Um, the current facilities we had at that time, they couldn't get him seen. Um, finally, he was seen at Binghamton uh, and sent to Binghamton Psychiatric Center. But this is my question. Um, when you have a loved one that has a problem like this, I mean, these parents have jobs. They have other children. Um, they were trying to deal as best they could with this crisis situation with their son. And what provision can, will be made for these families if they have to send their child to Utica? How um, how can they even I, it's, uh, it's, like? It's and a, if a child isn't, or a teenager, or anyone really sure. is in crisis, Nancy, where will to me. where I will they go? Well, it's unacceptable to me, Nancy, and that's why yeah. in, 2000, in 2006 I was able to get money from uh, the state to open the children's unit again because of this exact reason. Uh, I had, um, I can't tell you the number of parents that would call my office. Um, I had friends that were involved. Uh, I had people who were desperately in need of services for their children, and, and there was nowhere to go. And then uh, when they shipped them off to Utica, it became an even bigger burden because what happened was now the families, uh, as you said, the, the, they have to go to work here. Uh, they would have to take time and, and go to Utica and, and see their son or daughter or loved one. And I'm telling you that that's the one aspect of this that is totally unacceptable to me. Uh, I've let the governor know it directly. We reopen the children's unit because there is a drastic need for adolescent services here, and I am going to uh, fight to keep everything going, but I'm going to fight really hard on this one. Manny, let's take a couple more calls. Uh, uh, we're kind of winding down. We, we, we buy so much time to uh, be able to get out to you, and uh, I think our, our time is up in, in pretty much about 10 minutes or so. So, uh, Manny, let's take the next caller. Sure. Our next caller is from Aspen. We have Kim from Aspen. Kim, you're on with Senator Levis. Hey, Kim. Hi. Um, actually, the question I have is um, on the appropriation of funds. Um, I had seen a document uh, from the DOT uh, about a year and a half ago, and in it, it uh, it mentions like the extreme costs um, for. Uh, Creating the infrastructure for um, the ro the road and bridge infrastructure for gas drilling, and how that and it specifically mentions how that would actually uh, take away from other public programs, um, and would and would just yeah, create. Well, where, where, where did you see? You said you saw an appropriation. Where did you see this? Um, it's on a document uh, titled "Transportation Impacts of Potential Mar Marcellus Shale Gas Development." Oh, it, 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 it's probably a proposal that. Um, either Shenango County did or maybe no, no, no. Even this was from the. the I'm sorry, I, I lost her, Manny. What happened? I'm sorry, um, Kim. You know what? I'm sorry, we lost you. Um, if, if you can stay on the line, and at the end you can leave a message to us, because I, I, I do, we do want to get back to you and answer your question. And uh, it obviously, I, I don't think it's on any state document because nothing's been approved either way for. Uh, uh, hydraulic fracturing. So, um, but it, but it could be on a document that um, um, somebody was preparing to show um, um, either why they were for or against it. But please, uh, at the end of the call, you'll get a chance to uh, leave a message. Please do so, so we can get back to you. I'm sorry you got cut off. I don't know what happened, uh, Manny. Let's go to another caller. I'm so, I'm so sorry about that. Sure. Sorry about that. Our next caller is from Binghamton. We have Christine from Binghamton. Christine, you're Christine. on the line. Okay. Hi, Senator Libert. This is Hi. this is Christine, yes. and I congratulate you for what you're doing for the Binghamton Psychiatric Center. Mm, but you. I'm concerned about the mental health clinic as well. Um, sure. Today I found out that my therapist is um, losing her job at the end of the year. So many others are. I know a lot of people who need these services, and I'm concerned. Is that in your plan of what to do for the community? Yes, it is, Christine. It's all part of, of how we're going to provide services, um, not only through the psychiatric center, but also community services. Because, as I said earlier, um, um, I, was, I was the author of the original community reinvestment plan, along with several of my colleagues. 
Um, I believe that the money should follow the client. It hasn't mm -hmm. done that in New York State. And when it doesn't do that, it's hard uh, for mental health facilities to to hire good people or good therapists. And so that would be all part of a plan that we would we would put together. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, well. Manny, um, how are we doing? We've got a lot of calls still coming in. We've got a busy night. Can we take a few more? Absolutely. Our next caller is from Delaware County. We've got oh. Brian from Hancock. Brian, you're on the Fabulous. line. Ryan from Hancock. How's everything in Hancock? Good. How are you? I'm good, sir. Good. Good. My question is, what's taking the state so long to approve gas drilling? We see it going on all across the border in Pennsylvania. Yeah. Well, I, and, I asked uh, Governor... I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Finish. I have a, a brother that works for the company uh, down there in Pennsylvania that installs well pads or pipelines. And uh, I, uh, they have seen no problems. Well, you know, we're, we're waiting for a decision. Then, like I said earlier, um, um, one way or the other, we need a decision. We can't just keep delaying it. And when the governor was in town, he said that there would be a decision made next year. Uh, hopefully that's going to be true. And um, however the decision is made, um, we'll live with it and move on. But right now there has, uh, has been no decision. Uh, Manny, let's take a few more calls before we wind down tonight. Sure. Our next caller is from Endicott. We have Sheila from Endicott. Sheila, you're on the line with Senator Libby. Hi, Senator. Thank you for taking my call. Hi there. Hi. My question is, um, I'm really enraged to think that the government would even think about closing these mental health facilities mm -hmm. if, in fact, we need more. And sure. why, my question is, why, where is the money coming from to expand the jail? $5.6 million. When that is that Those is that the people, Broome County Jail? Um, yes, Sheila. Um, I, I'll, I'll answer your question to the best of my knowledge because it is a county project, and, and I'm not familiar. I saw it on the news just like you did. Um, I, I think they're bonding for it. I think uh, I think there's bond money out there that they're bonding because they need they need an expansion. But I'm not sure. But we can we can find out for you. But a lot of these people that are going in there need treatment, mental health, and drug. Oh, there's no question. No question. I mean, we if, need more, if anything, in this area. I can't if, understand. If, if either of these two even... It doesn't make any sense. You're absolutely right. If no, either of these doesn't. two facilities close, the jails are going to be the jails are going to be jam packed. So um, you're spot on. Um, thank you for your call, and um, um, you just make a very good point. Th this is this is the problem, uh, and 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 if you would just stay with me for a little bit here. Um, if you close these facilities, you put a burden on local governments, which means your local taxes are going to go up. You, you, you break the back of the local hospitals in their emergency rooms because they can't handle it. You, you ruin the inpatient <laughs> treatment facilities because they can't afford it. And the jails, the jails in all three of my, four of my counties, Broome, Tioga, Shenango, and Delaware, are just going to be overcome. And, and that's what I'm fighting against. That's why we need to keep these facilities open. Um, I, I'm going to go back to Manny before we close out here in a little bit. We're going to take a few more calls. Um, survey question number three was, what do you think is the most helpful state agency uh, in New York? Is it the Department of Health, press one, Department of Transportation, press two, Department of Motor Vehicle, press three, Department of Tax, I'm sorry, the Department of Tax and Finance, press four, or if it's none of the above and it's some other one, just press 5. I'd be curious to see what you come up with. Manny, let's take a few more calls. Sure. Our next call comes from Binghamton. We have Terry from Binghamton. Terry, you're on the line with Senator Libis. Terry. Hello, Hi, Tom. Terry. How are you? I'm so glad I'm to good. hear you're doing better. Hey, how are you, Terry? I'm I know, good. I know I'm, who this I'm, is. I only, I only get the name Terry that comes up, but I know who this is. Good to talk <laughs> good. to you. Well, Tom... The, the main burning question is what can we do to help you because I work in the school district now and I know mm -hmm. the families that you're talking about that have relatives mm -hmm. and parents that are, you know, using that facility and we really are so excited that you're fighting for it. And, of course, my second question has to do with fracking. Like we need sure. to make a decision and move on. We have three in college, so we need some yep. decisions made for jobs in our area yep. and to make yep. sure we're taking care of mental health in Binghamton. We see it in the school district, how much trouble is in the families, and we really sure. are so excited that you're fighting this. 
Terry, let me let me tell you. First off, you could tell people to go on on, on my webpage, TomLewis.com, sign my petition, but also Great. call the governor's office. There's an 800 number to the governor's office. Email the governor's office. It's very simple to do. Let them know you're from okay. Broome County. Let them know you're from the Southern Tier. Let them know you want the facilities open. Um, he needs okay. to hear from people. And for the rest of you that are still on the line, and I know we still have several thousand on the line, uh, please email the governor's office or call them. Uh, as far as hydrofracking, I'm with you. Uh, I want a decision one way or the other. It's, it, yep. it's, it's getting a little old for everybody, and uh, either the state has to step up to the plate and say yes or no, um, and, and just make a decision. Uh, that way people can go on with their lives one way or the other. And uh, right. if you like the decision, you can, you can um, you know, enjoy it. And if you don't like it, I guess you can fight it. So, you know, just like we do every other issue that comes before us. But um, you're right, just uh, the delay, delay, delay. I don't know how long you have to study something that uh, they're already doing in, in, in a ton of other states. And if you, if you don't want to do it and, and you feel that it's unsafe, fine, make a decision. Uh, if you feel right. that it's safe, and make a decision. So, Terry, thank you very much for calling. It's great to You're hear welcome. your voice. Hey, right, thank bye-bye. you. Thank you, Tom. Bye-bye. Um, Manny, uh, we're, we're almost out of time here. We're approaching 8 o'clock. Can we sneak in two more callers? Absolutely. Our next caller is from Vestal. We have Penny from Vestal. Penny, you're on the line with Senator. Hi, Penny. Hi, Senator. How are you? I'm good, Penny. How are you? I'm good. I worked at the psych center in the 80s when we were mm-hmm. forced to put our patients out into the community. Mm-hmm. Um, our community wasn't ready for them, and our community really hasn't recovered from right. our patients being out in the community. Um, nobody wants these patients in their backyard. Um, we hear that all the time. Mm-hmm. Where you know, where are they going to go? What are we going to do if they close these facilities? I have a young child. And I use Greater Binghamton Adolescent Center. Mm-hmm. Um, he's home now. He's doing good. But, good you know, if, uh, anything can trigger I understand. a crisis. And, sure. you know, like the other caller said, you know, I'm a single parent with other children. And if I have to travel with a unruly child to Utica, you know, we're talking about an unsafe situation. We need to keep these facilities open, and we need to keep broom development open for the jobs. The the campuses themselves are self-sufficient. I mean, there's just so much that these places offer for the community, for their patients, Mm -hmm. for their employees, for everybody. Penny, Um, I'm I'm on the same. Go ahead. We need to learn from our mistake in the 80s. It didn't work then. It's not going to mm-hmm. work now. And I, I, Governor Cuomo I, needs to see this. I agree. We need I to agree. keep these open. And I can't agree with you more. And, and as much as, as you depend on the Children and Adolescent Unit, I understand that. And that's why I reopened it in 2006 and, and, and will fight like heck to keep that open because we need it and, and we have to have it. Uh, thank you very much for calling and and um, and sharing your thoughts, uh, Manny. I think we can take one more call. Uh, we still have a lot of people. For those of you who will not get in, um, you can you can stay on the line. Uh, there'll be a recording. Please ask your question. And I apologize because we only buy so much time, and I'm actually out of time right now. But I think I can take one more question, uh, and and we will get back to you. My staff and I actually go through these. And, and look at uh, the questions are all important to me, and, and we will respond to every one of you. Uh, let's take uh, our last call of the evening. Sure. Our last caller is from Maine. We've got Tom from Maine. Tom, you're on the line with Senator Libis. Hi, Tom. Senator, Tom. thank you for taking my call. I'll try to make yes, it sir. quick. Cause I, uh, just the dollars and cents. Isn't it a yeah. lot cheaper to keep them in room development than put them in jail? Because that's where they're going to end up if they don't take their medication. Well, these the, the, the 60 folks, dangerous pedophiles that are there, yes, there's no question about it. Um, uh, it, it, is, it is a better place for them to be, and, and to, to be put in the jail, it's going to cost a fortune, because the, the jails aren't really prepared to handle this type of, of client. You know, 
we have uh, wonderful staff that are that are trained that handle these folks and and they do it on a regular basis and um, they've done an outstanding job and certainly uh, uh, we want to make sure that uh, that that continues um, let me thank everybody for joining us this evening uh, Manny I see that we had um, um, well over five or six thousand on the line this evening which is great um, the last question by the way is uh, let's see the most helpful state agency you think is the Department of Health and the least helpful state agency is um, motor vehicle and tax and finance. So I thought I'd share that with you. Listen, this is uh, Tom Libus. I want to say thank you for joining me this evening. Um, if you're still on the line, please, uh, uh, there'll be a recording. Uh, leave, your, leave your message. We'll get back to you. Uh, I want to thank you. We'll be doing more of these in the upcoming legislative session. Uh, thank you for joining my telephone town hall. You have a wonderful evening and a great Thanksgiving.